today we're going to be learning about birds. And you see that I have my parrot Melvin here. You know what? I'm not sure if you guys like peanuts, but Melvin really does. So I'm going to give him a peanut. Now, something you'll notice right away that's very interesting is he eats with his feet. Do you guys eat with your feet? That would probably be a problem, right? Especially during Thanksgiving dinner. But parrots use their feet for all sorts of things. The reason why? They have wings instead of arms and hands like we have. It's amazing to watch a bird in flight. So we're gonna do some science experiments with flight. But let's learn a little bit about parrots. So Melvin is a dusky Pionis parrot. Uh, they're native to Venezuela, Brazil, and Colombia. So South American birds. They have beautiful colors, as you can see with Melvin. They're also known to be very sociable, intelligent, and fun-loving sweet birds. That's what dusky Pionis parrots are known for. They can also mimic certain sounds. Just like that. All right, so believe it or not, parrots are some of the most intelligent birds right behind a crow. Crows are super intelligent and can actually mimic better than most parrots. Now, Amazon parrots have a very clear voice when they mimic. Crows, really awesome and sweet. So believe it or not, when you see a crow flying, they're super intelligent birds. All right, so uh, parrots, by the way, also have curved beaks, as you can notice that with Melvin. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can get him to whistle a little bit more for you guys. Ducks are waterfowl and can live up to 20 years. They also have highly waterproof feathers. And guess what? Next time you go out to feed the ducks, take them peas instead of bread. The bread makes them feel full, but doesn't provide the right nutrients. Pelicans are among the largest flying birds. They are famous for their huge throat pouches. A pelican uses its pouch and its very long bill to scoop up fish. Notice these birds are flying close to the water. Skimming permits the birds to take advantage of something called ground effect, basically making their flight more efficient and saving loads of energy. Look at this guy. He's a great blue heron. These birds are waders. They're typically seen along coastlines in marshes or near the shores of ponds or streams. They are expert fishers. On your activities from home, you're gonna notice something that looks like this. All right, so what you're gonna do, I've already made some cuts on mine. You're gonna cut it out, and then right here, do you see that dotted line? See where it says cut? You're just gonna cut till you get to the straight line right here. Then if you look closely, you have a dotted line here, and a dotted line here. So you're just gonna make a cut just like that. All right, so what do you do with it once you get the cuts done? By the way, something else you're gonna need is just a paper clip, one paper clip. 
All right, let me show you. And if you don't have a paper clip, if you got a little tape and a penny, that'll work too. It's just to add a little weight to what you're making. And what you're making is called a whirly bird. All right, so your fold's on your whirly bird. Here's the front of it. I'm gonna turn it around and use the back. And you can still see through the paper that solid line. I'm gonna fold it once like this and once like this. Now it kind of looks like you made a spatula, right? If you were gonna have some eggs, but we're not gonna have some eggs. All right, now I'm gonna fold this back over, turn this back over and make a little fold here at the bottom. This is where you can tape a penny or add your paper clip. There we go. Now you have these sides left. And if you look closely, the solid line, I'm gonna fold one side this way and then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to fold the other side the opposite way. Okay? So, what does a whirly bird do? A whirly bird will catch the air that's around it as gravity pulls it down. So that means it spins when you drop it. Have fun with your whirly bird. Let's have a little fun with flight and make our own kite. Just like when a bird's wings are outstretched, a kite will catch the wind. So it flies just using air and a little bit of help from you. So for this, you're gonna need a piece of paper. I have a very cool lime green sheet. Um, a hole punch. Um, I'm fancy, so if you don't have a hole punch, you can use, again, a nail or something like that just to make a hole in your kite for your string. So hole punch, um, some string, scissors, not big ones like this though, fancy again, and a stapler. If you don't have a stapler, you can use tape instead, but you're gonna use tape for some other things too. Now, a kite needs streamers. So you can use tissue paper, you can make your own streamers out of another sheet of paper, or you could use um, the you know birthday wrap or something like that, okay? S just streamers for your kite to help catch the wind. What I'm gonna use is I'm gonna recycle a VHS tape. Say you have something like the Phantom Menace lying around the house probably not going to watch that much. So you can actually get your parents to kind of knock this around a little bit and get the film out. This film makes perfect streamer for a kite. All right, so let's build our kite. I'm going to turn this right here so you're able to see what I'm doing. All right, so what you want to do is you want to fold your paper short ways. This in airplane, paper airplane making, is known as a hamburger fold. All right, when you open it back up, you'll see a line along here. Now this is a bit of a tricky fold, but not too bad. All you're gonna do is take your finger and bend down just slightly right here. It's okay if it's not that even. All right. So it's just a little fold like that. Then what you're gonna do is take the two ends, the same ones where you made this little fold, and you're going to gently pull one down like this, and gently pull the other down like that. All right, this is where you staple and hold everything in place. All right, now we're gonna add our streamers. So I'm gonna take my recycled VHS tape and I'm gonna cut one and two. You need to tape these to your kite. So I'm gonna set one down right here. 
Get a piece of tape. There we go. And the other one. I'm getting them as even as I can, but remember you can recut on those ends if you're a bit of a perfectionist. All right, there we go. All right, so this is where you need to actually put a hole in your kite. Remember where you did the weird fold and the staple? That's where you're gonna put the hole in your kite. So I'm going right here just behind my staple. And there we go. I have a hole through all of those folds. Okay, now time for string. So you wanna get enough that you can have your kite run behind you. And if you've never flown a kite before, wind is your friend. So you need a good windy day. All right, I'm just gonna run this through the hole. And tie it right here. And guess what? You have a kite. All right, so now again, get a nice windy day. Take your kite out. Let the wind catch underneath and take your kite for a nice flight. Enjoy your homemade kites and I will see you guys again next week.